What's good, R&B squad? This is Hot of Ruth. I trust that this message meets you guys in good spirits. If you are new here, welcome. We're happy to have you. And Jesus is, of course, always happier. So I have a word for someone today. As you listen, you're going to know whether or not it is for you. God got pretty detailed, so I'm just going to get into the word itself, beginning with the dream that I had and then the scripture and the interpretation, or in whatever order that falls in as I relate this to you guys. So this is a kingdom spouse word, but it's a bit more complicated than that because this particular person, for whomever this is for, this particular situation is very complicated. There's a lot of layers, a lot of ins and outs. It's a, it's a lot of stuff that is going on. So sir, ma'am, whomever this is for, stay prayed up, okay? Stay prayed up because you're facing some unusual circumstances and also also, you're dealing with someone who is a flat out mad person. This person really is. There's some serious mental instability going on. OK, so either that or they have absolutely no morals and they will do. They will stop at nothing to achieve an end. OK, to achieve a desired end. So let me get right in. I had this dream and in the dream, I saw a couple a couple looked like they were preparing for something. But at the same time, there was this person lurking in the dark and the person snuck into the apartment that belonged to one half of that couple. So the apartment, it either it could have belonged to the man or it could have belonged to the woman. What I do know is that this person snuck in there and this person was just snooping around looking for valuables to steal, looking for things to take, material stuff to take. OK, and that was the end of the dream. So it was very short, but the Lord really got in and got down and told me everything, gave me details as to what that means. So for someone, first of all, God has shown you someone and this is your person. You know that this is your person because God has told you this is the person that you're going to marry. However, you have been facing opposition and 90 Nine percent of the opposition that you've been receiving has all come from the same person. OK, this person is someone from your person's past. This is an ex. OK, this is a counterfeit. This is someone who cannot seem to understand that it is over between them and your person. OK, so. What the Lord is saying to me is that this person realizes that your person is ready to move on with his or her life, that your person is ready to really make a real commitment to you, that this person is ready to really go there with you and get married, okay? And this individual, this ex, this person from your person's past, they feel personally attacked, by that they feel like everything is happening too fast like they weren't prepared for this they didn't think that your person was that serious that they would actually want to, to make things solid with you there was a part of them that knew they knew that you were a person's person they knew that but at the same time they did not expect it to happen so fast and so they feel personally attacked by the speed at which things are going. But God is the one who is setting things in motion this fast. It's not even you, it's not even your person. God is the one that is setting things into motion this fast. And mind you, you may not even be in communication with your person right now, but never mind the fact that you may not be in communication. Some of you for whom this word is for, you are in communication with your person. But for others of you, you're not even in communication with this person. And that does not matter. This person has made his mind up, made her mind up that you're the person that they want to spend the rest of their life with. And because of that, he or she is putting things in place. They're getting their ducks in a row to make sure that they can do that because this ex has been snooping around in things that do not concern him or her. They know that your person is putting ducks in a row. Matter of fact, they may know more about it than you do. You may not even have the details. They probably know exactly what ring this man is going to get for you. If you're a woman listening to this, they probably know that he's already getting the ring that he's already saving toward it because they've been really snooping. 
in things that don't concern them. Okay? And if you're a, a, a brother in Christ listening to this and it's a man that is antagonizing you and your person, this this man knows that this woman, that the minute you, you propose to this woman, she's going to say yes. He knows. He knows. And so God used the word petty. He used the word petty. This person is very petty. There's a lot of narcissism in there. There is a lot of competitiveness. This person feels like they're going to be upstaged in some way by the two of you coming together. They feel like they're going to look bad. They're going to be embarrassed. Maybe they were very public about their their relationship with you. Maybe they were extremely public with it. And because of that now, the backlash of people knowing that the two of them are no longer, the two, these two people are no longer together and that one of them is moving on and is actually moving on with the person they're actually supposed to be with and is going to be happy, visibly happy. That alone is an issue for this ex, okay? However, the Lord led me to some scripture. He led me to Isaiah 40 verse 22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Let me read that again. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. So think for a moment of what a grasshopper is to a human being. Can a grasshopper get in your way and stop you from moving? No. As a matter of fact, you might stop it from moving. In the same way, your opposers cannot stop God from moving in this situation. Matter of fact, he is going to stop them from moving. He has the final say. All right? So, notice in this dream that this person, they were snooping around in the dark looking for valuables. I heard the Lord say something about jewelry something regard something valuable something that costs a lot of money it's something that this person is going to try to steal from your person and the stealing of this thing it was actually done with the intention of being petty okay like i mentioned before i believe i mentioned this before the lord said that this was done just out of just out of pettiness out of spite because this person does not want to see your person move on, or if you're the one in this situation and your ex does not want to see you move on, he or she felt that if they were to steal this thing, it would somehow stagnate you. It would somehow, somehow stop you from moving forward. And think about it. Let's say, for example, you started to say for I don't know, an engagement ring, if you're a man listening to this, or if you're a woman listening to this, your person started saving for an engagement ring, and then they have that money stolen, what would that do? It would set them back. Or if they already got the ring, okay, and then had the ring stolen from them, what would that do? It would set them back. So that is what this person is trying to do. They're trying to see how best they can interfere with this person moving on. And it is very, it is very petty and it is very childish, and it is being done purely out of spite. The Lord was very, very, very clear about that, okay? So sorry about that, guys. I just got a message. So let me go into some more scripture that the Lord gave me here. The Lord also led me to Amos chapter 6, verses 4 to 7, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Woe to those who lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and invent for themselves instruments of music like David's, who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils but are not grieved and sick at heart over the affliction and ruin of Joseph. Therefore, now shall they go captive with the first who go into exile, and the revelry and banqueting of those who stretch themselves shall be ended. And let me read that last part again. The revelry and banqueting of those who stretch themselves shall be ended. In other words, it's all fun and games until God starts pass passing out judgment. Okay? The same person, this same individual who is attacking your person or attacking you, your person is the same reason why this person is eating. Your person 
is the same reason, or if you're the one in this situation and you have an ex attacking you because they're, they're mad and jealous about the fact that you're moving on with your life, you are the reason why this person is eating. God is blessing you or blessing your person. And because of the fact that they have a Laban in their life, because of the fact that this person, this ex, has been a Laban in your person's life or in yours, this Laban has been benefiting from the blessings that the Lord has been giving to you or giving to your person. Don't get it twisted. God cannot bless mess. This person has a nasty heart, a filthy heart, full of evil, full of darkness. God cannot bless that. And if you look at the story of Laban, he was a little crooked in his dealings. He was crooked. God wasn't blessing him. God's blessing was with Jacob. And because of the fact that Jacob was in Laban's house, the blessings on Jacob's life, the blessings that followed Jacob filtered over into Laban's house. Do you see what I'm saying? Laban wasn't blessed and he knew he wasn't blessed. He knew that the moment the minute Jacob got up out of there, the blessing would leave with him. He knew that because the blessing was attached to Jacob. Do you see what I'm saying? And this person, this ex, is well aware that many of the benefits that they've enjoyed these past couple years, if they've been with your person for years, have been because of the fact that they were with your person, because they, were, they had some sort of affiliation or association with your person. I'm also hearing last name for some of you. This ex is actually an ex-wife or an ex-husband, okay? This person has been benefiting from carrying your person's last name or from carrying your, your last name if you're a man listening to this. They've been benefiting from the family name. The family name has some weight to it. Maybe your family is well-respected in business. Maybe you're well-respected in whatever field you're in, okay? They've been benefiting from carrying the family name. And not just that, benefiting from your hard work, benefiting from your person's hard work. And so they're well aware. They ain't stupid. They are well aware that the minute that your person leaves or the minute you leave, so does the blessing. So they're trying to hold on for dear life. And, and, and because of the fact that they can't hold on, now they're trying to block you from moving on, trying to block your blessings, willing to steal. Well, it's about to get ugly. It is about to get all the way ugly. I'm also hearing that there is a ch at least one child involved, at least one child involved, and your family is very concerned about the fact that what is happening here, what this person is doing, is directly affecting this child, okay? Because if this person is causing you financial burden by stealing from you, then it's going to affect how you take care of this child. Okay? And your family is very concerned about that. Now, what this person may have tried to do is they tried to somehow get favor from your family to get your family to take their side. Maybe they've been, been trying to kiss up to your family or kiss up to your person's family. But at the end of the day, that old blood is thicker than water rings true. Okay? Your person's family, or if you're the one in this situation, your family is going to stand behind you. Your person's family is going to stand behind your person in this situation. And I'm actually seeing in the spirit that it is a relative of your person or a relative of yours, if this is you in this situation, who is going to get the ball rolling with getting back what was stolen from you. So this matter is going to go all the way to court. Your family is going to or they're going to get the authorities involved in some way. They're going to get the police involved in some way, one way or the other. Your family is going to back you up or your person's family is going to back him or back her up in seeking financial recompense for what was stolen. So this person is going to get into some legal trouble. It is going to get all the way ugly for this person. OK. And you know what? 
you might be worried. You might be concerned about how this is going to turn out. You may be concerned about how your union is going to happen in the midst of all of this nonsense. But the Lord led me to Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it is, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So basically, God is saying to you, he spoke a word over your life, and it doesn't matter who does what. His word shall not return to him void. Okay? Your union will come together anyway, in spite of the opposition. And what's even better about it is that God is going to use the opposition for his glory and to benefit you and your person. So I hope that this message confirms something for someone. I hope it bless, some, bless someone. I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me. Take care.